Going back to training camp, I mean, of course, I think guys to get what you said that you guys are going to keep things simple. Now, going to year two of this rebuild, do you plan to expand on some on both of the floor? Yeah, 100%. We're going to expand. Um, we have tried some things a little bit later in the season. I think you've probably seen us pressing a little bit more, zoning a little bit more, trying to see some things, get some videotape on some things. And uh, yeah, we're going to expand our, our playbook offensively um, coming into the year as far as, and I told Alpi this and during our uh, meeting today, like I didn't expect having a post player <laughs> coming into the year and doing a lot more study this summer will help with that. And then uh, just knowing the strengths and weaknesses of our guys, we can really do some things, some creative things, but also some things that make sense for our group uh, going into next year now that the kind of base has been laid. And um, one of the main things that I wanted to do this season, especially after All-Star break, is improve our defense. And I didn't check after last night's game. It wasn't a great game, but we were 21st in defense after the All-Star break, which is a big jump from being 30th uh, before. So proud of that. This team, like everybody's under contract, change always happens anyway. Yeah. But if the bulk of this team is back with two rookies, where does how do you get better? Do you expect to get better in terms of wins and losses anyway? Yeah, I think just natural progression of guys understanding <laughs> we had a bunch of guys who did who never played in the nba before or guys who hadn't been in the roles starting role that they were in before or playing new positions and all the things we we really started at zero this year <laughs> with a lot of guys so getting to the point where we played an 82 game season with these guys and their roles will be similar next year um, depending on if we have two new young guys or not we'll still be starting at a much higher place than we were this season as far as understanding and then to Kelly's point um, not being so bland uh, on both ends of the floor because there'll be a much higher level of understanding when it comes to the young guys. Do you expect reinforcements or are you cool with uh, running it? I hate to say running it back, but... <laughs> I don't really know what to expect. I mean, you know, like you said, change is inevitable in this league, so I don't really know what to expect. What about as far as your staff? Steven, do you expect staff back as is? or? Is yeah, I, I mean, I do. I expect everybody to be back, but like, like we were just talking about, change is inevitable in this league, and I have a talented staff that could maybe one of them could be a head coach or maybe one of them could move on and be go from third assistant to second assistant or second assistant to first assistant and I was blessed in my career to be able to you know if there's an opportunity for me to move on and move up and get more years get more money or whatever um, that's a thing and uh, there were times where I wasn't allowed to do it and there were times where I was allowed to do it. And um, growing assistant coaches is important, but also having some continuity is important too. So finding that fine line between mm -hmm. the two is very important. Steven, Coach, I know that. Uh, some of the young players that you had this year, how much did you find yourself being not only coach, but being a friend, confidant, <laughs> yeah, <here's> a, <laughs> to talk to, maybe sometimes father people? <laughs> a lot. A lot, a lot is uh, just a fun group. I think I think everybody here probably has some memory or some story or some little quip that one of these young guys made you laugh or 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 made you feel like a connection with them. And I had the joy of doing that every day. And and we really have some really good people. And. And, I, and that's what I told the group last night is it's very much about the people. So, uh, yeah, there were times where I butted heads with guys, which was necessary. There were times where we would have to go to dinner, just him and me, whoever him is. Mm -hmm. There were times where we'd have to hug it out. And there were times where we'd have to come to my office and we'd have to talk about it. But 
Yeah, that's the job of the head coach. And uh, like I said, maybe it was last night, I love this job. I love being the head coach of the Rockets and I love this group and I love the people that I work with. So yeah, those um, relationships are organic and they come being the head coach, there's a level of, um, you can't get too close <laughs> because the accountability part, but I feel like I'm as close as I could possibly be while also having that hammer. Steve, 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 I know that every too? organization is different and some have more patience than others. So what does it mean for you to have another opportunity to coach this team again? It means a lot. It, it, I understand this business. I grew up in this business. And uh, I am grateful to Rafael, and I'm grateful to the Tillman, to the Fertitas, um, for giving me this opportunity, first and foremost, and then letting me go on this journey, this ride that we're all on, as far as we got a young group of guys who are learning how to play, a group that's rebuilding, and it is moving in the right direction, and I'm glad to be on the right with it. Having had a year with Jalen, what can he be next year? What can he be in his career? I mean, that's impossible to, to answer, <laughs> but he can be a very good basketball player for sure. He will get stronger. He will get more experienced. He will get um, better than he was this, this year. So that adds up to being a very good basketball player. What would it mean to you see him be first team all rookie? I did not see that. I said, no, what would it mean to oh. see him be first team all <laughs> when rookie? When he is, <laughs> it will mean a lot, just like it was when JT was first team all rookie last season. It will mean a lot. It will mean that he is one of the top five guys in the, in, um, the NBA as far as rookies are concerned. It will mean that all the hard work that he's put in when – None of us are here. None of these cameras are here. None of the microphones or anything. When he's in here by himself getting work in, means it pays paid off. And the product that we've seen on the floor over the last, since All-Star break, really, I mean, there's no argument to me. <laughs> like, there really just isn't. So, against him being first team all rookie. So, I'll, it'll be, I'll be super proud of him. You yeah, spoke about hearing from the guys um, that, that there's an understanding of the potential. Obviously, you guys have here with so much young talent. What's a challenge for you and them now to kind of just, just stay in this on this path, this moment, to kind of keep improving at the pace that you just want them to do? Yeah, I mean that's the job of any organization, right? I think keeping the the train moving in the right direction is, is the goal of every organization. So uh, we're in a little bit of different spot because we have so many young guys and we're pushing guys to learn a little bit quicker than maybe they would have to learn if they were having um, more vets on their team. But the way that it's structured, the way that it was structured this year is they could go out there and play, learn, grow, fail, get back up, grow, learn, like, um, and that will continue with this group. There is um, a lot of talent and still a lot to learn. And like I said last night, if these young guys that we have and the whole group, if they're going to have 10 year careers at the, at the least, the lowest, this is just one tenth of their career. So there's so much more ahead of them and we can't get caught up in the today. The today has to be helping them for tomorrow and helping them grow for their whole career. You spoke about your relationships with the players, head coach to player, how there's maybe a line that can't be crossed. How has this group of guys really helped you grow and find your identity as a head coach in this league? Uh, that's a good question. They, they're, they've been challenging at times, for sure, because like, you know, when you're the head coach, you want to, you want it to be perfect, you know? So there have been times where I've had to really embrace the, the process of 
failure and then bouncing back from failure or patience, knowing that the play didn't go exactly the way I wanted it to go. And hopefully it'll go better the next time. And that, that was probably the biggest like part of it that I had to grow and embrace is the mistakes that are made sometimes. <laughs> and they lessened as the season went along. And if I put too much pressure on them to play mistake free, then it would not have ended the way that it did as far as them improving individually as a group and us feeling in this media availability as we're on to something. You know, it could have been at the end of this, like, whoa, this isn't very good. But the way that it uh, kind of came together because of patience and because of conversations and because of hard practices and giving them some grace <laughs> at times, um, it ended up where we are right now, which I think is a pretty good space. Could you see yourself going through another year with that mentality? Could you see yourself doing another year, this organization doing another year with that mentality that you just described? It would be, um, it would be unfair to me, to the players, to let them play through so many mistakes that they already know. Mm -hmm. If you, if it, we went through this season and they learned a lot, then they can be held accountable to what they learned. But you have to allow them to learn it, right? And um, this season was about learning it. Next season can be more about you already know. <laughs> you learned this already. You already know. So going through it next season will still require some patience for sure, but will be different when it comes to like, no, remember we went through this whole season last year and we put this base in and we put this in, we put that in and um, you know it. And this summer is gonna be reinforcing it. So having all of these months of their learning curve going in the right direction, it would be a disservice to them to let them off the hook for stuff that they've already learned. Can it be about wins and losses then, to some degree? I think it can. Ms. Steven, you talked about them being young and continuing to be young next year. How much would it mean, though, to have some veteran infusion into this new team? I mean, you're going to still be young, but how much would that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much that matters. I'm not sure we, I mean, Eric Gordon <laughs> is a really good vet and was an important part of our team this year and does everything the right way. And um, if you watch Eric Gordon play, and I told you this yesterday, when he plays, the group loves the way he plays because he'll go between his legs four times and then go and like uh, Euro step and bump somebody off of him and finish. And the whole bench will be like jumping up or when Eric is guarding somebody in the post and is like, no, I don't need any help. It's like the players love it. So to say, yeah, we have a bunch of young guys, but we also have some vets like Eric Gordon who, uh, is someone that these guys really look towards for leadership. So 